Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to another video. I'm Ryan Beach, and for those of you that don't know me, I do a few things on YouTube. One, I make videos that I hope will help you get more value out of your practice sessions, and I also make videos that kind of share uh, where I am in the process of my practicing journey as well. Today, we're going to dive into another installment of this Trumpet Fundamentals a series, I guess, that I had started forever ago and finally I'm getting back to, and we're gonna cover flexibility on the trumpet. It's important that we develop great flexibility on our instruments because it's really the vehicle that allows us to play our instruments with ease. Being able to get into the upper register, into the lower register uh, without too many issues, without too many sort of changes in the way we do things is gonna help us be able to play pieces of music, have lines sound like they're all just one long flowing singing beautiful line, more like a singer would sound and less like we're having a lot of issues just trying to get around our instrument. This video is gonna cover a few different facets of flexibility. Uh, first, we're gonna cover a few different things I think are needed to be in place for us to be successful when trying to ingrain good flexibility habits. Then we're gonna talk about a few different types of flexibility that I think are important to cover in our routines. I'm gonna demonstrate some exercises with that so you can hear me do it. And then to close out the video, we're gonna just talk about a few things that I recommend um, that you would do in your routines to help keep things fresh and to make sure we're getting the most out of our work in our flexibility exercises. Let's get into it. To begin with, just like I did with the upper register and the articulation fundamental videos, I just wanna go over what I think is necessary to be able to be good at or adept at flexibility on our instruments. It's to me really just a function of two things. Number one, we need to make sure our airstream is uninterrupted. That as we begin to try to go from one note to another note that we don't stop the air for any reason, that it doesn't get sort of less or anything like that. Rather, we're blowing all the way straight through everything. And number two, that we are playing from the center of one note to the center of another note and that we're not sort of making a partial sound or sort of a pinched sound anywhere. We're trying to learn how to blow straight through things from the center of one note to the center of another note. If you find yourself struggling with your flexibility exercises, one of these two things is probably the culprit. So what I would recommend is for you to maybe put the horn down for a second and try to do some air patterns for some of these exercises that you're doing to make sure that your air is doing what you want it to do, something like this. As you can hear, there's zero interruption in my air. And then for the second one, you're most likely gonna have to record yourself. Kind of listen back and ask yourself with a critical ear, am I playing from one center of the pitch to the other center of the pitch? And if not, how do I make sure I'm hearing the pitches correctly? How do I make sure I know where I'm aiming? This is the kind of work you're gonna wanna do in the practice room. Moving on to the few different facets of flexibility. Uh, to me, there are about four different ways we can look at uh, flexibility work in our practice. The first one is gonna be sort of dead, slow. The notes aren't changing very much, you know, half notes and whole notes, maybe quarter notes at a slow tempo. This is gonna challenge our ability to play completely straight and not telegraph that we are changing notes at the end of it, but rather blow all the way through and then coordinate the change. And then we have kind of ones that are a little bit more uh, pliable or elastic, you know, the ones where we're in with eighth notes or maybe triplets where that's moving around the range of the instrument a little bit. That's gonna teach us how to keep the air completely steady, but not gripping so hard that our chops can't sort of click into the right spot. The third one is what I would consider to be sort of challenge flexibility, you know, slurring octaves or greater and trying to figure out how to manage some of those jumps. And then the fourth, which we will not cover in this video because I think it's related to flexibility, but slightly to the side is uh, lip trills and things like that where it's sort of almost uh, uh, its own thing. It's its own way that you would approach the instrument. We can talk about that in a different video, but I wanna focus mainly on just sort of the approach to normal sort of flexibility exercises that you would see. So like I just said, the first kind of exercise that we're gonna wanna incorporate into our routines is gonna be this sort of dead slow or just the slower flexibility exercises like what you would find at the very beginning of the violin book. 
When we're approaching an exercise like this, uh, hopefully you'll hear this when I demonstrate it in just a second, but we want a beautiful, clean, centered, resonant first note. And then we wanna maintain that in every single note that we slur to. And we wanna also make sure, like I said, that we don't telegraph, that we're not leaving the note early so we can try to sort of push our way into the next note or something like that. We wanna make sure that it's completely straight and that we click into the next note at exactly the right time. Time. There's a few different forms of progression with this, but the easiest one to work with is just range. And so here is a few pages later in the violin book, and now this will go up to an E, but we're basically trying to do exactly the same thing that we established in the first exercise, just at a little bit higher part of the range. This kind of flexibility is incredibly important for our foundational abilities on our instrument. We cannot skip this step and assume, well, it's easy or it's no problem and I can do it. We gotta make sure we understand how to produce sound in this sort of basic way so that when we begin to expand past this in these next exercises, we're applying the same kinds of concepts of flow and focus just on more moving targets, I guess. Moving to the next version of flexibility, we have this more sort of pliable, more movement-based exercise. These are the ones you hear people playing over and over and over and over again for good reason. They are incredibly beneficial to uh, our playing and our practice. And we wanna make sure that when we play them, we're not just going through the motions of playing them and saying, well, if I play them, I'll get better at flexibility, but rather we are trying to imprint the right kind of approach when we do these exercises. When I'm working on these exercises, again, I'm trying to make sure I have a beautiful first attack. Everything is gonna be built from the very first attack, so we gotta start with quality. But from there, I'm very focused on keeping it forward on my lips, the air specifically that it's right very far forward so that the air is constantly driving to the next note. And I'm sort of following the air instead of sort of forcing things to happen by either pressure or by you know manipulating something in a weird way. Here's a basic exercise from Bailin that I hope will demonstrate that. Once you've used an exercise like that to establish this baseline of being able to keep things focused and completely consistent with your air, after that, you just sort of begin to play a little bit more difficult exercises after each other. So maybe you go a little bit higher, like in this exercise. Or maybe you go even higher, like in this exercise.
It doesn't really matter what you play. What matters is that you first establish what success looks like in sort of a basic exercise like what we started with, and then you say, that is success, I need to hold it in these more difficult exercises. Like I said earlier, it can be really easy to think if I just do these exercises, I will get better at flexibility. And to some degree that's true, but you will hit a plateau at some point and you'll have to go back and uncover how to break through that plateau. So it's really worth our time to get it right from the very beginning because not only then do we understand it, but we're constantly reinforcing that habit over and over and over again as well. The third version of flexibility that we're gonna cover here is what I would consider to be sort of challenge exercises. It's ones that uh, have large leaps or go into the upper register higher than what we're used to doing in sort of these sort of baseline middle of the road exercises. And uh, it's really something to include into your routine once you have a good foundation and you want to begin applying that foundation in more extreme examples. Here are a few exercises just back to back uh, of ones that are really challenging for me and ones that I can do but I need to bring my best focus to the table and make sure that I'm applying all of the things that I know will make me successful to these exercises. For this final part of the video, I just wanna share a few things with you. The first of them is going to be kind of uh, a way that I have approached my fundamentals that has helped make flexibility exercises a little bit more bearable or interesting. And the second is just a general mindset that I would encourage all of you to approach your work with. The first tip is just to vary the tempos that you play these exercises with. I have in my career played lots of flexibility exercises, the slow ones at 60 beats per minute. I played the fast ones at 120 beats per minute and never really deviated from that. But in real music, we are asked to do all sorts of different flexibility related things at all sorts of different tempos. And so varying the tempos helps us to address the different stimulus that, that requires and how to learn how to navigate uh, a dead slow exercise at 58 beats per minute and then at 90 beats per minute. And what is the difference between the two and how do we navigate that? It's something that I've been incorporating in my fundamentals for a very long time and I just find it to be uh, a great benefit in the flexibility aspect. Again, not only for the ability to learn how to do this in different contexts, but also just keeping us sane and not playing it the same way every single time. The second point that I wanna make is a general mindset approach and that is just to not try to get lost and trying to do things that are hard all of the time. Uh, one of the, my favorite books to work out of is Scott Belk's Progressive or Modern Flexibilities for Brass Instruments. And I think it's an incredible book to keep things varied as well, but a lot of the exercises can be challenging. And I've listened to students and clients of mine try to play some of these exercises with some success, but really, there's no reason that they couldn't work on some of these more basic violin exercises and sort of get the foundation built. So when they get back to the exercises in Scott Belk's book, they have a foundation with which they can apply to the Scott Belk exercises instead of kind of fumbling their way through and trying to figure it out. In general, the philosophy that I try to hold for my own practice is that my practice sessions, especially my fundamental practice sessions, are centered around learning and growing in Knowledge, not necessarily proving to myself that I can do something through a whole bunch of different exercises. So put learning at the beginning. It's okay to back up and do basic exercises because if you're able to learn so much more about flexibility or whatever other skill you're working on through these basic exercises, then you can said you can take that into more difficult exercises with a lot more success. All right, everybody, that's gonna be all for this video. If you enjoyed this content, let me know down below and let me know what other content you might wanna see on this channel. Uh, please also make sure you like the video if you liked the video and subscribe so that you don't miss out on any other videos. 
If you have any questions about what we talked about, I'll leave a link down below for a free 30 minute meeting that you can have with me where you can tell me what you're struggling with and I can hopefully help you overcome some of those struggles. And if you wanna take a lesson with me so I can hear you do some flexibility exercises and I might be able to help you with some specific tips for you and your struggles, we can also do that as well. Thanks so much for watching the video. Always remember, stay strong, be kind to yourself, never stop growing, and we'll see you in the next video.